Okay, Shalom, Shalom, Kwame Asa'ala, Koholimla, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekahakadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. And just want to say the water to all the Akim and Nakhwaf that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. This is Yahanan Nawaf, just coming at you with another quick lesson, praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. I wanted to touch on, um, you know, Esau giving the numbers as far as, you know, people, you know, traffic reports or telling people, you know, be careful in traffic. There's going to be a lot more traffic accidents during this um, solar eclipse and all this other different stuff when people should have just had their asses at home. So now this particular one right here is kind of bugged out. I think, um, yeah, a Long Island doctor who died during family road trip should have never been in RV Airstream says, okay? So she's basically riding in a damn trailer. You're not supposed to ride in trailers like that because the driver can't see what's going on behind you. It's not like a, you know, a, um, a inside, you know, one of those, um, you know, mobile homes type deals, you know what I'm saying, where everybody's on the inside. This is something that's, a, a, a you know, attached to the truck. And there's no way of communicating or seeing. I mean, you know, of course, you can have your phone, but you're not supposed to do that. That's a trailer hitch because that shit can detach from the truck. You know what I'm saying? And 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 shit can tumble over and flip. It's not made for that. It's made to pull it to wherever you're getting it to and setting it up. And then you, you relax and chill in it from there. But this lady, she was in the back of it. And she was a doctor from um, Long Island. I remember seeing it yesterday. But it also made me go off and I wanted to Google this. Check this out. I Google fatalities during the eclipse. It says a total of 1,878 individuals, so almost 2,000 people were involved in, of whom 741 were fatal. So 741 people died yesterday in fatal crashes over the three days. Well, not yesterday, but over the three days. Eclipse exposure interval, 10.3 per hour. 10.3 people per hour was dying trying to go see this fucking eclipse, man. So this is why, you know, we, we was going off into the scriptures, um, the Jeremiah. Let me go into Jeremiah real quick. Give a, a, a brush, a brush up of, of what we was going into. I mean, a lot of scriptures was coming out, but this is one of the main ones in Jeremiah chapter 10. That also tells you about not celebrating Christmas as well. This is, um, oh, I'm in numbers, lock you. Jeremiah chapter 10. I'm going to start from verse 1. It says, Hear ye the word of the Lord. I always say it like that. Hear ye the word which the Lord, Yahweh, speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. So this is going to the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's your true biblical nationality. This is not for the heathen because he's telling you what he's going to go on to say is to not do what these people be doing. I've seen a lot of Jake, you know what I'm saying? It was Jake that was at these... Um, Eclipse sites and shit with them stupid ass glasses on so-called black woman mainly was mostly what I seen It says thus saith the Lord Learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them Then it goes on to say for the custom of the people are vain For one cut at the tree out of the forest the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe They deck it with silver and with gold they fasten it with nails and with hammers that it moved not. So that's going off into Christmas right there. You know? So while people running around on... Uh, uh, fucking, um, you know, December 25th. Celebrating white Jesus, which is a damn idol. The scriptures is clearly telling us... Because, see, this goes back further. That Christmas shit, it's a lot, of, um, a lot of stuff that goes with that. That's another lesson, though. But the point that I wanted to make is... The customs of these people are vain. He told us to be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. That's why it was nothing for me to come home. I, you know, I, I was chilling in the basement. I've done a live watching the shit from the TV. Then I get to, um, to the plantation today. I, this Edomite that was, he was leaving work all early. He left work four hours early to drive to a whole nother state to see the shit. And got caught up in a whole bunch of traffic and didn't even enjoy himself, he said. I, I, I couldn't do nothing but snicker. You know what I'm saying? Laugh at his ass. But anyway, again, it says a total of 1,878 individuals were involved in whom 741 41 were in fatal crashes over the three-day eclipse exposure interval. 
10.3 per hour. Over the six control days, 1,137 were fatal crashes, 7.9 per hour. Okay, so it was 1,137 um, people, the study um, says. Crazy, bro. And they was already saying that. Here you go. You got all these, these people out on the road. They're not paying attention. It's all some big joke to them. It, you know, it, you know, on some old, the ball about to drop in New York for New Year's or some shit. You know, they was drinking. A lot of them was high as hell. A lot of, you know, but this lady right here, she caught it pretty bad, though. Let's go off into what happened to her. So, of course, the company, they're going off into the airstream she was in wasn't designed to for her to be in there, which they're covering their asses from the lawsuit, right? Where well, you can go. Here you go. You know, she's um making that nice little money. She's a doctor. You just got to take off days off to get on the road so you can go and see the eclipse, which is your last day. <laughs> of being here you know but anyway let's get to the point see here's the trailer right this is what she was in anybody could hit that you know somebody could swerve into it or it can just completely detach from the back of the truck and and now you floating <laughs> you floating you know but anyway it says that she um la doctor killed and freaked airstream trailer accident no it wasn't no accident the lord set her up because we know that the lord kills and makes alive according to deuteronomy 32 and 39 which we can get into but i wanted to get to the point as to what happened to her uh let's see here the mother of three was traveling to kate vincent with her family kate vincent who you think see this is esau and you know the scriptures talked about esau having the fatness of the land the fatness of the earth you all out. You know how many of these motherfuckers are sitting around a lake, on their boats and shit, looking and staring into the skies, drinking champagne and whatever. You know, Esau, man. It says, um, the mother of three was traveling to Cape Vincent with her family to watch the eclipse when the freak accident happened. No, not an accident. The Lord set that all up. Horrified witnesses later said. They saw the side door of the RV open and her arm hanging out as she tried to pull it closed. My husband saw them right before they left. He happened to talk to them. He said they were going up with their daughter to see the total eclipse. The neighbor who identified herself only by the first name, Maria, explained through tears. Just a few moments before the accident, she and her daughter, Helena, were riding with Robert in the family 2019 Ford pickup truck with Robert driving the Airstream attached in tow. Right? Here you go. All oh, happy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. That eclipse shit. Yeah, you, uh, hey, they say a lot of people was like, they'll never forget the eclipse. I bet you these people right here won't. They won't forget the day. I bet you they won't forget. Horrible memory, man. They had stopped for ice cream and were just about 20 minutes from the Airbnb. When she and her and her daughter decided to ride the rest of the journey in the 2024 model RV. 2024, you know they just got it. That bitch brand new. Brand new. This is what Esau do though, man. You know, hey, some of them still are able to, you know, they, you know, they're still sitting pretty set as far as money. They can get out, they can travel, they can do things, you know, as opposed to a lot of these Edomites, they're just crashing and burning. But she was a doctor, I'm sure her husband was probably some, you know, of what America would call successful, probably your daughter as well, you know, and they done got them a brand new Airstream and they just on the road. 20 minutes, 20 minutes into the, only 20 minutes left on the trip. Just think about that. That's calculated, that's calculated judgment from you. How about Shimei Awashai, man? Okay, it says, according to her daughter's account, she was lying on the bed, located in the rear of the camper. State Police Sergeant Jack Keller said, her daughter recalls that her mother was trying to secure the passenger side door of the camper and subsequently gets thrown from the airstream. Ooh, it ain't no telling how fast he was going. Let me see. She struck her head on the road medium. She was pronounced dead at the medical center. She was born in Poland and worked as a pediatric allergic allergist, allergist and an immune immunologist. So, you know, she was passing off them COVs, baby. She is passing out them jump shots. You know she was she 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 had the face diaper on, 
giving people all the boost, the boost mobiles. <laughs> they moved here about four to five years ago. The neighbor said they just brought an airstream two months ago and said she was so sweet, really nice, really nice. Yeah, yeah, that's what they all say. Her and her husband had three adult daughters. And one of them lives in Virginia, while another is studying to be a doctor in Arizona and was set to get married this summer. So see, there you have it. See, do all that, that, that do, you know, they're, they're well to do. And Esau got the fatness of the land, man. What do you think they was going to? You think they was going to some rinky dink ass place? Yeah, probably, you know, got a, a top of the line Airbnb. And now when you look at this, too, also, it says her, you know, they had three daughters. Now, this man could carry on his lineage if he married another woman and, 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 and impregnated her with a son, because that's the way that the seed line goes through the male. But with those three daughters, hey, that, that, that kind of stops his lineage. That's it. You know what I'm saying? You know, so it is what it is. But let's get a couple of scriptures because I just found this to be interesting right here. I just, you know, just by the spirit fatalities during the eclipse. 1137 was fatal, man. They said like eight per hour. So every hour, at least eight motherfuckers was getting fucked up. Crazy. And then, not to mention, what's that? That you had the um what's that? The lady. I seen that earlier. The lady that said God told her to, to kill people. Oh, let me see. <laughs> a so-called look like a so-called black woman, too. Bear with me here. See, I ain't even had to put it all in. Woman directed by God goes on shooting spree during eclipse. See? Woman claiming God told her to go on a shooting spree because of solar eclipse. Shoots drivers. I think that was in Florida. And you know, motherfuckers crazy in Florida. I, I don't know. Here she go right. Is this her? God damn. Wow. You know you see E with them damn dreadlocks. God damn. And she looked like she had a, a, a spit. Yup, said she had an AR-15 and a 9mm. 22 years old. A woman from Florida claims she went on a shooting spree after being told to do so by God. <laughs> Man, boy, I tell you. Hey, but guess what, though? Let's go into the scriptures, though. Let's get this right here real quick. Going to the Apocrypha. Ecclesiasticus 39. Let's start at verse 28, because she did have a spirit on her. She had a spirit of vengeance on her. She had one of them left-hand spirits on her, man. Ecclesiastes 39 and 28, there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hell and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword. Punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. You know, an angel snatched the door open on that airstream, man. You know, all that was calculated. And we know that it was calculated because when you get the account of Ahab in um, 1 Kings, let's see here. Because the Lord had, a, you know, we know that the Lord sets people up because man, the scripture says that man's goings of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? Roughly paraphrasing. So everything that you do when you get up on a day to day basis, it's done because the Lord calculated it for you. There's no such thing as free will. You got people running around here. They just thinking that if you if you had free will. You could you could have hit that uh, um that that big game that was over a billion dollars because to to have free will that would be you would have to be all knowing to have free will. I'll put it that way. If you don't know what's gonna happen to you in the next thirty minutes, how could you have free will? Right? I'm sure anybody with free will they'll tell you hey you know they gonna hit every big game lottery there is and be wherever they want to be. But this is First Kings twenty two. I'm gonna start at verse nineteen. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the, of the Lord, Yahweh. I saw Yahweh sitting on his throne, and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. 
And Yahweh said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Galead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. So here's the Lord he's having a council with angels or spirits on both sides, left hand side and right hand side. Because you have to understand that the Lord created everything in twos, right? In the scriptures talks about a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. So you can't have good without evil. You can't have life without death. You can't have male without female. You know, you can't have up without down, wet without dry. You know what I'm saying? Everything got that two and two um, 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 ordeal to it, right? So it goes on to say, and there came forth a spirit. One of these spirits of vengeance came forth and stood before the Lord and said unto and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? So the Lord is like, how you going to do it? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. See? So you don't hear scriptures like this come out in the Christian church. Because I, 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 I'm assuming if a pastor were to bring these scriptures out and explain them, I mean, it should put some fear in the people to, to straighten their shit up, you know what I'm saying, so to speak, you know. But people, you know, Christians don't have no real fear of the Lord, man. Because they're running around, you know, pretty much overall telling the people that, hey, you're saved by grace already. Do as thou wilt. You're OK because you're already saved. It don't matter. Right. Well, let's get. Uh, no, uh, quoted this one. Proverbs 21 and one. No, Salaki, so that's not what I wanted. Um, Proverbs 11 and 1. Jake got all the boom. That shit, boy. It's going to be some boom when them damn missiles come. Jake don't repent, man. Proverbs 11 and 1. A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. See? That false balance. Matter of fact, let's get that. Um, You can't have life without death. The Lord didn't create it that way. He created everything in tools. Let's get that in the Apocrypha real quick. Ecclesiastes 33. Let's start at uh, verse 13. As the clay, and Ecclesiastes is a book that's in the Apocrypha in the 1611 King James Bible. You get the 1611 King James Bible before the so-called white man got his hands on the Bible and removed certain books. These books go with the Bible, man. But it's also called the um, Book of Sirach as well. Well, this is um, Ecclesiasticus 33, 13. As the clay is in the potter's hand to fashion it at his pleasure, so man is in the hand of him that made him to render to them as liketh him best. Good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So look upon all the works of the Most High and there are two and two, one against another. See that? So the Lord created everything in twos. And let's get this one. Isaiah 45 and 7. And these are, um, you know, basic scriptures that, you know, brothers should should learn when they first come into this truth. You know what I'm saying? Because it give you gives it kind of washes you of the bullshit that you learn in the Christian church. Because the Christian church, they're telling you that Satan running around out here just doing what he wants to do. When in reality, Satan is just one of those spirits of vengeance. Right. Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. See, that's a two one two. See, light and darkness. Peace and evil. See, so that's a two and two. And um, I think what's that? Ecclesiastes. Uh, let's go into it. Uh, chapter three. So when you look at when you read through Ecclesiastes chapter three, these are like these are like two and twos where the Lord has complete balance at. Verse 1, it says, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. See, that's a two and two. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. That's a two and two. A time to kill and a time to heal. That's a two and two. A time to break down and a time to build up. Going through it, you know what I'm saying? You can, you can clearly see that the Lord, he created everything in twos. You can't have positive without negative. You can't have calm without erratic or you can't have um, humble without pride, prideful, righteous without unrighteousness. You see, 
You can't. It, it, it just uh, you can't have it. It's, it will be an imbalance, and that's an abomination to the Lord. So the Lord, He kills and He makes a lie. He wounds and He heals. Those are two and twos. Let's get this one in Amos, chapter three, verse six. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? That's a clear indicator of who's doing the evil, man. And that word evil, you know, there's this, you know, this, when you, you know, Esau, the so-called white man, he gives you these movies with this white guy. You know, he's supposedly playing the devil. He's got the red suit on, you know, with the pitchfork and shit with the horns on his head and the gold tea and shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and he has made it seem as if, you know, that's got, that's, that's got to do with evil. But evil just means a bad time or bad, something bad happening, so to speak, man. You know, and the Lord, he's the one that creates those scenarios for people throughout, you know, their days and time. Because matter of fact, if you uh, let's get on um, Proverbs. 20 and 24. It says man's goings of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? So the Lord is the one that's walking everybody into what he wants to walk them into. Every step you made today was orchestrated and put together by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You didn't do any of that on your own. As a matter of fact, when you go into Job 33, let me see here. We start at verse 13. Job 33 and 13. Why doest thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. For Yahweh speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, this is the point, check this out. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction. So it's why you're deep in your sleep, man. He's sealing your instruction. You get up, you thinking that you're just about to do whatever you plan. It goes exactly the way that the Lord wants it to go. As a matter of fact, the scripture talks about um, how... Uh, 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 you know, roughly paraphrasing, you can make plans, <laughs> but it's going to go the way that the Lord wants it to go. You know what I'm saying? You might, you, you might be wanting to go, you know, you got plans, you, you know, you done already got reservations. You done spent money, shit already reserved. You thinking that you about to go out of town, you know what I'm saying? You, uh, you know, done planned a, 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 a you know, a, a, a cruise or something. You done already put your money down. And the Lord will do something altogether different, man. Well, you, you know, you, you never make that cruise. You see? So you can make the plans. But is it going to go down the way that the Lord wants? If, it, if it's not the Lord's will, it's not going down that way. That's why this um, Paul, you know, he, he spoke about praying or saying when you say something, roughly paraphrasing, if it's the Lord's will, I'm going to do such and such, such and such. Because other than that, you're being wicked as hell, really. Because you're, you're basically saying, okay, I'm God. I know for a fact that within three weeks, <laughs> I'm going to be doing this, 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 and this. But you don't even know what's going to happen in the next three seconds. Literally. Okay, so I just wanted to touch on this, man. I mean, this is a gruesome-ass way that this lady went out. But she wanted to go do what? She wanted to go see the eclipse. She even went as far as, you know, getting an Airbnb. Why she couldn't have watched that shit from her wherever she lived or watched it on the news. Oh, I got to experience this experience. But these are a lot of people, man. I didn't even realize that, you know, I guess it makes sense, though, because they was kind of saying that to be um, careful out on the roads and stuff like that. Because um, there's going to be a lot more traffic out. It ain't no different than any of these other holidays like Fourth of July. You know, people traveling for Christmas, Thanksgiving. It's a lot more people on the road and people not paying attention. So it's a lot more accidents and shit like that. But anyway, we know that it's all about the spirit and power of Yahweh about Shemi Shai, man. So I just wanted to touch on this for a hot sec. <laughs> I seen it yesterday, though, and I'm like, God damn. You 20 minutes away from where your destination and you get snatched out of, a, you know, sucked out of this damn airstream onto the onto the roadway. They didn't even say how fast they were going, because if it's freeway wise. I know here, top speed, you know, or, you know, speed limit top is 70 miles an hour. And, you know, people don't be traveling like that. His ass was probably, her husband probably was driving that bitch about 80, 90. Sucked her ass right out of there like a vacuum. Can you imagine that? You know, you already know. You could clearly see 
that they that, that, that asked for ate her ass up. Ate her ass up. Anyway, just wanted to touch on that, man. Uh, the fatalities of the eclipse. So with that, Kwame Yasharo.